in the book, you describe the Geekway as kind of four components, right? Yep. Uh, speed, ownership, science, openness, right? And these are kind of key dimensions of the geek way. Maybe walk us through how you came about to these four characteristics and maybe some of the research that you've unearthed, unearthed showcasing how a culture built on top of these characteristics leads to better corporate results. Right. So I can't prove to you that the four norms that you just listed, science, ownership, speed, and openness, are the final answer for what the geek way is. I, I can't, you know, I can't derive that from first principles. They came about because I was just doing an extended pattern matching exercise. As I did my research and, and went through my career, I have the really good fortune of spending time in both halves of the economy. I, I hate these phrases, but the old economy and the new economy, the industrial era incumbents and all these weirdos over in Silicon Valley who were disrupting thing after thing and turning out astonishing offerings for us. And so as I was wandering around year after year, I kept on trying to understand two things. Number one, what distinguishes the geeks from the incumbents of the industrial era? And number two, geek companies are very different in some important ways, right? Netflix and Amazon are very different companies in a lot of ways. But to me, they felt more similar than different, and I was trying to understand what's consistent across these companies that I kept coming across that I thought that I thought were so amazing. And I kept on seeing a few things over and over again. Number one, they're just iteration fanatics. They're agile fanatics. The old-fashioned waterfall method of running a big project is rare if you ever see it in a geek organization. Another thing was that they just, they were full of engineers and scientists and people who love to be data driven, but they, they did more things than just generate a lot of data. They would follow it. They would, they would not let data lose out to intuition or to what the boss wants to hear, what the boss believes. And they love to argue with it with each other. Adele, like you know, geeks love to argue with each other. So these are very argumentative cultures. They were also much more egalitarian. And I saw this over and over in different ways than the ones that I saw in the industrial era. And they had this fondness for pushing decisions down, for running much more autonomous, decentralized companies, no matter what the org chart looked like. When you looked at how things actually got done, you saw a lot more devolving authority downward, atomized companies, decentralized companies in a lot of ways. And so those were the commonalities that I saw. And I, w I distilled them down to these four norms. And I should stop for a second and, and be crisp because I gave a very vague definition of the geek way up front, right? It's an upgrade to the company. A much more precise one is it's a company that follows four big norms. And that word is critical because a norm is a thing that the people around you expect you to do. A norm is a thing that's community policed. So in other words, it doesn't matter how many speeches the data that the CEO of the company gives about being data driven. If your peers, if your immediate supervisor, if the folk around you are not, you will not be either. So it's not what's on the wall. It's not what's on the inspirational poster. It's not in the annual report. It's not what the CEO wants to have happen. It's the stuff that the people around you expect of you. And the deep, deep similarity to me when I walked around these companies was that the, the peer pressure, the community policing is around speed, openness, um, science, and ownership, these four norms.